If you recall last time on Easy On Cars, we installed LS2 coil packs, made our own spark plug wires, got some new injectors, and then got started on our tune. Having gotten frustrated with the mega squirt and the sink loss issues, I decided to shift gears and install my short throw shifter. For this, I went the cheap but satisfying route of using the Perrin bushings and the Cartboy shifter. So I also added the Cartboy short throw shifter and you know I wasn't really sure what was up with my shifter bushings because it's always felt really sloppy. I had the, the car on the track last year and the transmission just you know it was hard to get into fifth. It wasn't very smooth so I decided to just go ahead and put the short shift kit in and I recently drove a stock WRX and I didn't necessarily need the throw, short throw but I decided to go ahead just to, you know, make myself get in there and change some, change some bushings and things. So I did get the poly bushings and I did get um, basically the bushing that goes in the back here, hold it in place. But while I was doing that, I found out that there's actually a spring that goes from uh, the input shaft into the transmission uh, to, I think it's actually the, the bottom like lever part of it. And so that spring holds this in place. And so before I put that back on, because it was missing, uh, this thing would wobble all around and now it, it feels like a factory feel. It doesn't really go all over the place. And now with the short throw, I can easily shift. It's very short actually. And I can easily click it into any gear. Um, so it's just got a much better feel. I think just replacing the bushings and adding that spring back on, I would have been just as happy, but um, I'm starting to like the feel of it after driving around a little bit. So. I'll probably do a review in the future here of just going down the road and let you know what I think, but also I'm sure there's plenty of other people out there that have reviewed the Carboy Short Throw Shifter for 02 to 07 WRX. With the shifter all sorted out, now it's time to get back to debugging the ECU. So with the Subaru VR sensors, I was running into a little bit of sync loss problem and I think it could probably be tuned out with all the different settings they have in Megasquirt whether it's um, the gain adjustment or there are like hysteresis adjustment pots on the mega squirt and you can do that for both the crank and the cam. Um, I decided that I was going to go digital so that way I didn't have to worry about that as much and the last mod that I just did was I put a hall sensor in for my crank trigger. Actually this is the cam trigger here. So you can see it, it's red down there, it's bolted on. You can see it right there poking out behind the cam gear. And I have had a lot of luck with that. Um, it seems to have resolved a lot of my sink loss problems. So what I'm actually gonna do now is convert my crank signal to the exact same thing. So here I have another hall sensor for my crank trigger and I got this generic from DigiKey, comes threaded with two nuts to connect it up. And just as I did in the last one, Dan printed me some housings for these sensors. Here you can see the old VR Subaru cam trigger. Yeah, these guys are not my favorite, but I know I have heard that you can just use those ones. Um, I think that the hall sensor is going to be a little bit more reliable. Then again I have the wiring to make my own connector. And I can actually show you here because I have a handy dandy spare engine. So we take the 3D printed housing. You can see it just fits right in place there be able to go ahead and bolt it down and you can see where the 12 tooth 
gear is. And then if I slide in the hall sensor, and eventually I'll bolt it down. But you do need to keep it one millimeter within one millimeter of the teeth. So that's going to be the next thing that I'm working on quick here. Probably won't be very exciting because I'm guessing I won't be able to shoot much video of that. Plus, who really wants to see that anyway? But that's just the general idea behind it. And if you're wondering how I made it work, that'll give you a little bit better idea. All right, so I've been playing around with the crank sensor finally. Here's the one I just pulled out. It is not in good shape. I knew that when I put it in, when I installed the engine. So basically, it has a little dent in it right there. And I actually wrapped it in electrical tape because this sensor um, came out of the last engine very difficult. So I think actually me pulling it out is what damaged it. Now, the problem here is that these are really expensive and I don't think you can even really buy them anymore. So I remember looking and I want to say it was in the $150 to $200 range to get one of these. Which is another reason why I'm glad I'm converting to Hall. Speaking of which, here is the Hall sensor that I've just installed. Let's see if I can get a good look at it. So there it is on the left hand side. You can see the other crank sensor that I'm not using but I'm just going to leave it in place so you can see the housing that we built sticking out and the bolt right behind it. I've got the wires coming up right here on this little harness and then I'll just run this harness underneath the intake and finally back to the firewall into the ECU. Just the same way I did the cam sensor so we're going to have haul for both. Awesome. With both the hall sensors in place and wired up, it was time to check the timing. I found that the timing was actually really far off compared to when I was using the VR sensors, so this is a step you don't want to skip. Once this was all finished up, I got the car back out on the road and kept my eye on the sink loss counter. After about 200 miles, I've seen zero sink loss from the ECU, and that's revving from highway speeds all the way up to 6,000 RPMs. If you like this video or you like easy on cars, please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for the next episode.